So far, we talked about the uh, complications of suppurative otitis media and its uh, classification and overview. Then in the second section, we talked about the intratemporal complications. Now, in this section, we will talk about the petrocytis and labyrinthitis, which involves the labyrinth inner ear and then petrous bone. In this, we will talk about what are the causes of uh, petrocytis and labyrinthitis, how they present and what are the clinical features, what's the management and treatment of petrocytis and labyrinthitis. So first is the petrocytis. Petrocytis is the spread of infection from middle ear and mastoid to the petrous part of temporal bone. So petrous part of the temporal bone, if the infection spread from the middle ear or from the mastoid bone, it's very, very close to mastoid hair. So it can spread to the petrous part of the temporal bone and can cause petrocytis. Uh, petrous bone, it becomes uh, pneumatized, uh, diploic and sclerotic. All these changes can occur in as a result of petrocytis. Pneumatization of petrous apex uh, Postro superior tract, some cells can even pass through the arch of superior semicircular canal to reach the apex and entero inferior tract. So these are the uh, uh, parts which involve pneumatization occur in the postro superior and entero inferior tract of the petrous bone. Clinical features are the Gradiningo syndrome. Gradiningo syndrome is external rectus palsy. Rectus muscle is in the eye. So when the external rectus muscle is paralyzed, then the, uh, so it's not functioning properly. The internal rectus pulls the eyeballs towards the inner side. So this is the uh, Gradinigo syndrome. Deep-seated ear or retroorbital pain is present. So pain is in the deep ear and is in the behind the eye. So retroorbital behind the eyeball, there is pain present or it's deep in the ear. Persistent ear discharge fever, headache, vomiting, and neck rigidity is also present. Facial paralysis and recurrent vertigo. Vertigo is a spinning of the head and there is also facial paralysis. So all these is, are the uh, features present in the Gradinico syndrome. There is rectus palsy, deep-seated pain, uh, retroorbital pain, persistent ear discharge, and then he, fear, fever, headache, vomiting, neck rigidity. These are all the features present. Management. And this you can see, this is the cholestitoma, then we have eardrum, external canal, and mastoidectomy. Management is diagnosis is done by CT scan and MRI. Treatment is cortical, modified, radical, or radical mastoidectomy. So removal of the mastoid is done because the infection is from the mastoid that is involving all the uh, petrous part of the temporal bone causing petrocytis. So usually cortical and radical mastectomy is performed. 
intravenous antimicrobial or antibacterial therapy. Facial paralysis, if you see, this is the baby with uh, facial paralysis. The mouth is deviated to one side. Uh, acute otitis media, uh, bony canal dehiscen, nerve lies under the middle ear mucosa. And then when that nerve is involved, then it can cause uh, facial paralysis and it is inflammation of middle ear is this. So uh, bony canal is dehiscent, nerve lies under that, involvement of that leads to facial paralysis. Chronic otitis media, there is a cholestitoma formation and there is formation of granulation tissue. And both these can lead to acute otitis media and chronic otitis media leads to facial paralysis as a result of uh, compression of the nerve that lies under the middle ear mucosa. And when there is pressure on that middle ear mucosa and nerve it can lead to facial paralysis both acute and chronic otitis media can cause facial paralysis the me mechanism by which they do that is different but both can cause facial paralysis in chronic it's due to cholestitoma and granulation tissue Next is the labyrinthitis. This is the part is showing the labyrinth or the inner ear. Labyrinthitis, inflamed labyrinth. You can see it's all uh, red and discolored. So labyrinthitis is the inflammation of the inner ear. That's the structure. This is the external auditory canal. And then there is um, the uh, middle ear, then the inner ear, all that, and then use the chin tube. <clears throat> so labyrinthitis can be circumscribed labyrinthitis. It's fistula of labyrinth thinning or erosion of bony capsule of labyrinth, usually of the horizontal semicircular canals. There are semicircular canals present in the inner ear. The involvement of horizontal semicircular canal is usually more common. And then there is erosion or thinning of bony capsule of the labyrinth. And also in the fistula of labyrinth, there is circumscribed labyrinthitis also. Cause is chronic suppurative otitis media with cholestitoma usually leads to circumscribed labyrinthitis as a result of chronic suppurative otitis media with cholestitoma. Neoplasm of the middle ear also leads to circumscribed labyrinthitis in which we have carcinomas and glomus tumor. Trauma to labyrinth is another uh, cause of circumscribed labyrinthitis. This is the uh, labyrinth or inner ear. Clinical features of circumscribed labyrinthitis are membranous labyrinth is exposed and becomes sensitive to pressure changes. So it becomes very sensitive to pressure changes. There is vertigo, which is transient not very long, just transient vertigo. We'll have a, a sudden period of uh, dizziness and it's not very long term. Management is 
diagnosis is by fistula test because one of the ca cause we said is the fistula of the labyrinth. So if there is fistula, we can diagnose it by the fistula test when we put pressure on the trigus and sigil speculum when we put the pressure or air as a result of speculum. Ampulo, uh, petal flow of endolymph causes nystagmus to same side. So when fistula test is performed as a result of uh, speculum and pressure on tragus, what does it do? It causes flow of endolymph which causes nystagmus or movement of the eyeball to same side. Here treatment is mastoid exploration and systemic antibiotic therapy. This is the picture that's showing mastoidectomy or removal of the mastoid. So mastoid exploration, this is the management of circumscribed labyrinthitis. Next diffuse serous labyrinthitis. Diffuse intralabyrinthine inflammation without pus formation and is reversible condition if treated early. So in this serious labyrinthitis, one was circumscribed labyrinthitis. This is serious labyrinthitis. It's more diffuse and in this there is no pus formation. It's the secretions are serous, not suppurative or mucopurulent and it is re reversible if the treatment is started early. Arises from pre-existing circumscribed labyrinthitis associated with chronic middle ear suppuration or cholestitoma. So it is uh, occur as a result of circumscribed labyrinthitis which can later on lead to diffuse and when it is associated with uh, chronic middle ear suppuration or cholestitoma. Acute infections of middle ear also lead to labyrinthitis serous and stabidectomy or fenestration operation is usually performed to treat this. Clinical features are vertigo and nausea, nystagmus towards the affected ear, diffuse inflammation, sensory neural hearing loss because now the uh, cochlea or inner ear is involved, labyrinth is involved and when that portion is involved in labyrinthitis usually sensory neural hearing loss occur. This is sensory neural hearing loss when sound waves are not processed correctly you can see nerves are there from there the sound goes to from the inner ear to the uh, different nerves so sensory neural hearing loss occurs. If untreated, it can pass on to suppurative labyrinthitis with total loss of vestibular and cochlear function and patient have no balance, no, uh, uh, it can lead to uh, sensory neural hearing loss and there is loss of balance. So all these are the clinical features of diffuse a serous uh, labyrinthitis which can occur as a complication of circumscribed labyrinthitis if not treated properly and there is um, sensory neural hearing loss, nausea, uh, vertigo, nystagmus towards the affected ear. Treatment is, um, medical treatment is mobilized patient head with affected ear up. So patient should be, uh, affected ear should be facing upwards. Uh, antibacterial therapy, uh, labyrinthine sedatives, myringotomy, opening of the uh, eardrum. Surgical is uh, cortical mastoidectomy or modified radical mastoidectomy. 
myriapectomy. This is the myringotomy in which the tube is inserted to remove the fluid or drain the fluid and then we can give antibiotics, labyrinthine sedatives and then cortical mastoidectomy or radical mastoidectomy is performed to treat this condition. Diffuse suppurative labyrinthitis. We said diffuse serous labyrinthitis in which there was no pus formation, but now it's suppurative labyrinthitis. So it's due to pyogenic infection with permanent loss of vestibular and cochlear function. Severe vertigo, nausea, vomiting, vestibular function is lost, so patient will have severe vertigo with nausea and vomiting. Spontaneous nystagmus with quick component towards the healthy side. So spontaneous nystagmus with quick response towards the healthy side of the eye. <clears throat> Total loss of hearing now, and this is the diagram. You can see very, very bad balance. Uh, treatment is same as serous labyrinthitis, drainage of labyrinth is done. So patient's balance is lost. There is complete failure of uh, cochlear and vestibular function. So balance is not maintained. Patients will frequently fall. Total loss of hearing and nystagmus is with quick component towards the healthy site. So that was all about petrocytis and labyrinthitis in which we talked in detail about different types of uh, labyrinthitis, uh, diffuse serous type, circumscribed type and diffuse suppurative labyrinthitis, how they present and how we should manage these uh, uh, complications of suppurative otitis media. Thank you for watching scardia.com.